Blizzard Nation. Welcome to the first episode of the Green Bay Blizzard Coaches Show. I'm Joe Bonadonna alongside head coach Corey Roberson. Uh, coach, how's it going today? It's going good. It's going good. It's good. Uh, before we start, I just want to thank TNT Sports Bar for having us tonight. Uh, the game this week, April 23rd, this Friday at 7.05 at the Rush Center uh, against the Bismarck Bucks. Uh, before we get into that, just uh, it's been a while since we've had Blizzard football. Um, 2019, uh, it was, a, it was a good season for the Green Bay Blizzard, but um, it's been a while since we've had football. So what are your thoughts on the break and finally getting back to football? Well, it's good to, uh, it's good to get back to somewhat normal routine, right? Uh, we've been off, uh, I mean, we ended, what, March 2020, sometime right. in March, middle of March. Um, that was a long off season going into March from the 2019 yep. season, uh, especially the way we uh, ended the season mm-hmm. in the playoffs. Um, so yeah, no, it feels good to get back out here. Feel good to uh, you know get some get some more noise going in in Green Bay with the guys being in town and you know and, and ready to play some football. Absolutely. So a lot of change from the uh, 2019 season. Uh, new quarterbacks in town: uh, Aaron Aiken, Damian May. Uh, two really different styles of play. Uh, Aaron has uh, three years of indoor experience. A big body guy at six five. Meanwhile. Uh, Damien, I, I believe he's, this is his first time playing indoor, and uh, he stands at six foot one. Uh, you know, what do these guys kind of bring to the table at, at the quarterback position? Well, both of them very athletic. Um, they are uh, both a dual threat um, style quarterback. Uh, we we uh, we having a battle in in camp, and they still battle in this first week of uh, going into the season. So, um, you know, it, it's uh, you know leadership, Aaron. With the three years of experience, he brings some leadership. And um, Damian is, I mean, quarterbacks, that's just a natural leader, you know, so he's, he's right alongside of them. So um, good competition, and, you know, we'll see who gets the nod. Yeah, so um, not ready to name a starter yet. Monday, we got, we got a lot of time yet. Yeah, uh, Friday. We, got, we still got practice. Uh, we will see this week. Uh, returning guys from the 2019 season, uh, you, you got to start with Bakari Triggs, uh, IFL Defense Rookie of the Year. Uh, what are you hoping uh, that he brings to the, to the squad this year? A little more leadership, right? Uh, Bakari was a rookie in 2019. He was very quiet. He's a quiet, uh, quiet young man. So um, this camp, he's shown the leadership. He is the returning starter in that uh, secondary uh, from the 2019 season. So he's been helping out the young guys, um, getting them up to par. He's been a little more vocal this year, um, which is good to see. Uh, offensively, you, you bring back guys like Kieslo Smith, Keyshawn Taylor, uh, Ram Owens, who was a running back for, the, for a while there. Um, Offensively, uh, you know, guys that have been here in Green Bay, what are you hoping that they can bring out of the table? Well, they better pick up where they left off. Right. I mean, <laughs> that's why they're here. Um, no, uh, looking for the leadership from all the guys. 2019, they, they set the foundation for us um, to get back on the winning track here in Green Bay as far as the indoor game. And, uh, you know, I'm looking for their leadership and, and uh, bring the new guys along the way and let them know how we do things here in Green Bay. Uh, another thing to mention that I didn't have on the agenda, Matt Barrett, former Blizzard quarterback, uh, now the offensive coordinator. Uh, how's he kind of been over the uh, preseason last year and uh, camp this year? Uh, how has he been uh, as an addition to the coaching staff? As a quarterback, you, you, you wouldn't uh, expect anything less of him to gradually, naturally uh, come into that offensive coordinator role. Um, he's, been, he's been great for us. He's been great for the quarterbacks, you know, uh, helping them guys, uh, grooming them, getting them up to par, and and, and the offense that he's created for us. So he's been he's been excellent. So it's good to have him, former player here, um, have whole Blizzard records in passing. Um, I believe touchdown passes in a single season, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it, it's been good. It's been good. Uh, defensively, uh, a big name, Deshaun Taylor back, leading tackler, uh, Deldrick Canty on the defensive line. Uh, the defense was always kind of a, a big part of the, the success last year, forcing turnovers, uh, having a guy like DT back, um, a, a, a tackling machine. How, how do you uh, hope he fits in on the defensive side? Well, the same with the, the offense, offensive guys. He better pick up where he left off too. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a leader on and off the field. Um, guys know that he's, he's living in Green Bay. Um, he's doing his uh, um, fitness um, career as well, and he's a uh, uh, he's been a, a true testament even to our new linebacker. You know, we got we're bringing another linebacker as well, so he's been helping out. Um, I'm I'm expecting big things from De- uh, Deshaun Taylor this year. He's uh, worked on the things that I asked him to work on in the off season, 
So he's become more familiar and, and recognizing past past concepts. Um, I would say that was his weak point in 2019, and so far in camp, I've been seeing that as a, a strength of his. Uh, another guy that was on the 2020 roster, didn't get a chance to play, obviously, but on the roster now, uh, Eric Thomas. He's been around the league uh, for a while, uh, mm. offensive and special teams at, at receiver. Um, I, I mean, we've seen him uh, as an opponent of right. the Blizzard. Uh, how do you hope that he uh, adds to the offense and special teams uh, here in 2021? <laughs> Yeah, so he he better do the things that he did against us all them years. That's what I'm hoping for with with him uh, being a part of our team. Tank brings that veteran um, savviness. Um, he has been around for for some years, four years, four or five years, and um, he is a he is a man out there um, amongst boys at times when when opposing defenders um, you know match up against him. He he catches everything. Um, so you know he's he's bringing that leadership to our already good receiving core. And he's he added on to that, and uh, a guy. And I speaking want to of special oh, yeah. teams, yeah, because he kicked our yeah. butt in the yeah. in that playoff game. I yeah. mean, he, he was well, returned. Yeah. I, I was there. Yeah, I was yeah, there. yeah. I'm yeah. So, so no, it's uh, it's good to have him on there. I, I tell him all the time, it's good that I don't have to game plan against him anymore. Right. So that yeah. was a. Uh, that I, was, I would have to agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another guy in that receiving core, uh, McGarrett Kings, uh, second leading receiver on the Michigan State playoff team from 2015. Uh, he's been trying to. Find a professional opportunity. He found himself here in Green Bay. Uh, how are you hoping that he he adjusts to the indoor game? Well, he's been doing. He's been great. Um, he's actually been one of the surprises in camp. Um, not knowing he was a late signee, um, it was kind of hard to pass up on a kid that has that caliber, that stats coming out of a Big Ten school. Um, and he kind of fell into our laps. And uh, he's been every everything as advertised. He is a, a great athlete, and you know he's here with us. He made the team, and you know we're looking forward to him making plays as well. And other names that uh, haven't be- that weren't on the 2019 or 2020 rosters that are here in 2021. Any any names that stand out to you after camp? All of them. All of them. They made the team, baby. All right. All right. <laughs> they all right. made the team, baby. So they all go. they all standing out to me. All right. So. Uh, we want to open it up to questions from people here in our uh, our live audience. All right, Coach, I got a, a quick question for you right quick. Are you looking to do more like a power run scheme or a spread offense, or what's kind of the game plan for the season going in? Game plan for the season, that's a great question. So we will not do a power run, if that's what you're asking me. Uh, we will run the football. Uh, we will run it well. Um, that's the name of the game. You run the ball well, you win the championship, right? Last last four teams that won the championship has ran the ball, has been very successful running the football. Uh, we will spread the ball around. I mean, the object is always to go into the game 50-50 run pass. Um, sometimes it may be 60-40. You know, that just depends on the game flow. I'm with that. <laughs> <laughs> Open it up. One more. Nice seeing you as well, Mitch. Um, so... Having been a, a, a fan since the beginning, a lot of the fans gravitate towards the kickers. Mm-hmm. And I know that the kicker is just a, a kicker. But we noticed that uh, last year, or last year's, 2019's kicker, Cody Barber, is going to kick for uh, Bismarck this year. Tell us a little bit about the guy we've got to replace him. Yeah, so uh, the gentleman that we have to replace Cody Barber, which was is a great kicker as well. He's over in Bismarck, so we'll see him on Friday. Um, Henry Nail, Henry Nail is is every bit of advertised. Um, just recently, he just signed a CFL con- um, deal. He just well, he just got drafted in the CFL. So if they have a season here, uh, um, pursue that career. Of course, um, it's a higher league, and we promote that. Um, he is uh, he. <laughs> I believe he's the best kicker in the game. That's my opinion. Um, not just because he plays on the, on our team. You talk about different things where ball placement and, and, and those type of things, he can put that ball anywhere you ask him to put it. Um, uh, so, you know, we're hoping for great things out of him. We got some goals that we set forth uh, from our kicking game. Um, it's been a stat out there for the past three years. Um, only two kickers have had 90% or better extra points. Um, I don't think Green Bay was in that category. Uh, so, therefore, you know, I believe Henry Nail could uh, put us there. Uh, field goals, I think we're looking for uh, 60% field goals. that are actual field goals, not the long ones. Um, that sometimes we got to kick it out of bounds or whatnot. So, um, I think, 
Yeah, those are like punts, right? So we, we uh, I, I believe he could, he, he has an opportunity, of course, to reach those goals. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Did you want me to say like between the kickers, like we got the better of the two? <laughs> well, you know, you know that the, the Bismarck coaching staff is going to be watching this. Yes. Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah, they'll be, we all love Cody, right? They, Cody they'll be watching awesome it. They'll be watching it. It, it. We'll see you Friday. I'll let you guys decide. <laughs> Good luck this year. We're all hoping for the best. Thank you. But uh, when I was looking at your schedule, it stood out right away. You got, you, know, you got 16 games the first half of the season. You got six home games, two away games. Second half, you only have two home games and six away games. I know you take things week by week, but is that something you – Look at it, and, and you're concerned about ending the second half of the season with six away games, or do you just take it week by week, or is that something that? Uh, no, is I, I mean, of course, we looked at the schedule and we said, "Who? That's that's going to be that's yeah. a long stretch, right?" Um, but a- after we looked at the schedule, of course, you get over it. You know, we we on to what we got to do to prepare for week one, and that's where we at right now. So I'm not looking at. Whatever happens in August, we get to August when August come. Uh, we worry about April 23rd right now. I know that's kind of cliche, but I, I'll be honest with you. I haven't even thought about who we play next the following week. Um, my, our focus is, time. yeah, yeah. So um, when that week comes and, you know, we look at that long stretch and we're not able to sleep in our own beds for a while, um, you know, we'll probably feel it after the first two weeks, you know, after that is done. And we're like, another hotel again. And, you know, so we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But um, I'm, I'm – uh, you know, it, that's the nature of the beast, right? That's the nature of the game. Whereas though we, we, we adjust and go go with the flow. However the schedule, wherever the schedule sends us, that's what we do. Great. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Thank uh, you for having us as well. Hey, proud to have you guys. There we go. TNT, baby. <laughs> Bismarck, uh, uh, Mitch mentioned it. Cody Barber, familiar face. Um, he, he's been around Green Bay. Uh, Corey Ross, the offensive coordinator over there, uh, former Quad City head coach. There were a couple classics last year between Green Bay and Quad City. Obviously, uh, a lot of guys there from Quad City. Um, How are you expecting the game on Friday to go uh, between a lot of familiar faces? And Yeah. No, it should be a good game. Um, Corey, uh, we talked a lot this offseason. Corey has become one of my uh, good friends in this game. And um, our communication, he he, he, – think he's figured out our defense so that's yet to be determined on Friday um but we we had some good battles in 2019 um you know the last second uh we scored what 15 points in yep. 50, 50 seconds or something like that to beat them near and then we scored on the last second here um back-to-back weeks um so it's gonna be a good game he's a good offensive coordinator um he's a young up and coming offensive coordinator um once head coach we'll get back to being a head coach or someday Sometime and um, but he's uh you know he's he's I know he's gonna have the boys ready, um and prepared to go up against our our team as well. So um, I'm looking forward to being a good game. And um, another thing I wanted to mention um obviously it's it's been a while uh, since we've had a game. What have you been doing since uh, the last second of that playoff game in June to uh, to now basically? What have I been doing? Yeah, it, it, well, long time. It depends on who you ask. So if you ask my wife. She would probably say I've been getting on her nerves. Okay. So it's been a long off season, but um, it's just recruiting. You know what I mean? Trying to stay fresh. You know, watching film, and, and we always looking at film of players. Um, so we, you know, we constantly um, evaluating talent. Uh, but uh, overall, it's just, just trying to stay sharp. You know, uh, you, 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 we was off for almost a year right. um, before we was able to come back. So it's just really staying sharp, trying to stay tuned with what you do and your routines that you do. Um, on a day-to-day uh, basis as far as football. But, um, yeah, yeah, you ask my wife, she'll have a different story to say. Well, it, I mean, that, that's a good way to put it. Uh, <laughs> we'll put it simply. Nah, uh, you know, we, we – uh, no, nah, I'm, I'm good. We uh, ready for Friday night. Ready for, ready Friday, for Friday night. Friday night, night lights. Uh, again, April 23rd at the Rush Center, 7.05 uh, against the Bismarck Bucks. Want to give one more thanks to TNT Sports Bar, uh, Big Bark Media, Uh, Again, I'm Joey Bonadonna. That's Coach Roberson. Uh, Thank you for being here. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, We'll see you next week.